let's move to the next part where we will see how does the phone music scale criteria really looks like and then i will give you one of the definitions of elastic and plastic response in ductile materials based on phone music yield criteria and then in the next part we will start working on implementing that theory again i will keep the derivations to minimum and i will try to give you more details on the final outcomes and assumptions if you are more interested in derivations then you can look at any basic solid mechanics in a stress analysis book okay so when you talk about yield criteria you use it to predict the onset of plastic yielding under the complex stress state so you can have a very complex 3d stress state you want to predict the yielding or plastic onset of plastic yielding then you need an yield criterion once the plastic deformation has started you can have strain hardening in the material due to the dislocation motion and the interaction of different dislocations so there are different types of strengthening mechanisms and for that you need hardening loss so that will be the second part of this course to determine the plast components of plastic strain you need to define a flow rule which defines how your material is going to flow or deform during the plastic deformation so for that we need a flow rule so again i will define that in next few slides so for this course and for phone music criterion we are assuming everything to be isotropic this means if we change the orientation of the material the properties don't change also we are assuming that material is elastic plastic and it will be in the first case with no hardening and in the second case it will have isotropic hardening so if you talk about plastic yielding different theories available and the most widely accepted theory is the maximum distortional energy theory and it says that when, when the maximum distortional energy equals the distortional energy at yield in a uniaxial test the material will have plastic yielding based on this energy definitions we end up with this kind of criterion which says that when the equivalent stress uh, which is given by a square root of 3 times j2 and j2 is the second invariant of the debitoric is less than or equal to sigma y so what is j2 j2 as i told you is the second invariant of the debitoric stress and in terms of principal stresses it is given by this relationship here where sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 are principal stresses which are independent of the coordinate system i gave you the definition of that in previous part or in terms of Debitoric stress tensor it is given by this relationship where sigma i i prime will be zero so you end up with half of sigma i j prime times sigma i j prime and if you want to compute sigma i j prime then that is basically computed based on the total stress tensor which is given as sigma i j minus the hydrostatic part because we believe that the debitoric part is the only one which is trying to change the shape of the material or distorting the material and that's why maximum distortional energy comes into play here so this definition is called the J2 plasticity theory or J2 plasticity criteria or fold Mises yield criterion. So there are many different names in the literature on that. Most widely used name is phone Mises plasticity or phone Mises yield criterion. So now if you want to define the phone Mises plasticity theory, firstly you need to define the elasticity. I'm going to use for elasticity generally people use the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio as elastic constants, but I'm going to use in the basic solid mechanics or stress analysis we prefer to use lamis constants lambda and mu so i'm going to use that and based on that 3d stress state can be given by this equation where sigma ij is equal to the last lamis constants times the strain tensor and it's the same as uh, uh, young's modulus times the epsilon value in 1d so this is given by this so sigma ij is lamis constant lambda times delta ij times epsilon kk so this is the volumetric part plus this is more sort of a 2 mu times epsilon ij elastic so everything is elastic in this case and that's why a strain tensor is given as elastic in the superscript abacus also uses this this definition so that's why i'm going with this definition here if you want to define the stress rates or stresses in abacus then abacus generally uses yeoman or co-rotational rate form for solid elements while green nakhdi rate for shells membranes beams and trusses so you have to make sure that if you are implementing the umat for solid elements 
or for shell membrane beam or truss elements you need to use the appropriate stress rate definition so in this case we are going to do it for solid elements so we're going to work with Yeoman stress rate so above equation in the Yeoman stress rate can be given by this where j is basically used for Yeoman rate and now you can see it's in, in time derivative terms so sigma dot ij equals to lambda delta ij times epsilon dot kk elastic and then plus 2 mu times epsilon ij dot as well now everything has is in elastic zone so if you want to find out the increment of stresses we need to integrate this so once when we integrate with respect to time then in the co-rotational frame where well, the integrated form is generally given as this equation here again i'm giving you the final relationship you can look at the derivation in any any textbook so delta sigma ij which is the increment of stress tensor is given as given in terms of the Lamy's constants and the increments of a stress tensor in volumetric and total elastic strain tensor form so this way you can define the Yaman rate in incremental form now if you move towards the next part which is the plasticity so we need to first define the yield function and either as we discussed the yield function is based on the maximum distortional energy theory and this gives us the von Mises yield criterion which is given here that equivalent stress should be less than or equal to sigma y right and for non-hardening materials and sigma and sigma equivalent is generally given as the square root of 3 times the j2 where j2 is the second invariant of a stress tensor and is given by this equation here and if you want to compute sigma ij prime which is the debatoric stress tensor then you can compute it with the actual stress tensor in addition to that we need to also define the equivalent plastic strain because we need to keep track of the permanent deformation in the material due to the plastic deformation and that is based on the equivalent plastic strain and for that you need to find out the increments of the equivalent plastic strain which is given here with respect to time and you have to integrate it over the total time to get the accumulated plastic equivalent plastic strain in the material if you want to find out the epsilon dot plastic which is a time increment of plastic strain equivalent plastic strain with respect to time then it's given by this square root of 2 by 3 epsilon ij plastic dot times epsilon ij plastic dot this is a plastic strain tensor rate right and now we need to define this this uh, evolu the evolution of this strain plastic strain tensor so that we can compute the total equivalent plastic strain in the material due to the plastic deformation. So to, to define this, we need another law and that's called the flow rule. So the flow rule is based on the normality rule. And in this case, you can define or in the phone music plasticity theory, the and the plastic strain tensor evolution equation is given by this relationship here so it's a function of 3 by 2 times the debatoric stress tensor over the yield strength times the evolution of the total plastic strain tensor equivalent plastic strain so this comes from that equation here from previous step if you remember here and then here and then so we update that based on this we compute the next one so the phone Mises yield surface if you look on if you want to look at the phone Mises yield surface based on these equations flow rule and also the stress definition then it in the 2d stress space in terms of sigma 1 and sigma 2 as the principal stresses it looks like an ellipse as shown here so anything inside this ellipse means elastic anything is at the border or outside the border is basically plastic deformation so this is called the yield surface in 2d stress space the equation is given as this which is again based on the simplification of the that equation which we had in the previous case so in most of the cases when you are implementing the phone music plasticity we normally work with a normality rule and normality rule works in such a way that if we apply a strain value and we predict we try to calculate the trial stress value if it is somewhere inside this limit then we compare it with the 
yield strength and if it is below this then this means it's, we are still inside the yield surface so everything is, is still elastic so you don't need to compute any of the plastic deformations but if you are applying any deformation and you find out that your trial stress is outside this yield surface this means you basically are in the plastic zone so if you have no hardening so you have to return it back to the yield surface and generally to returning to the yield back yield surface is done through normality rule which means you will always return in the direction and you will or you will intersect the yield surface in such a way that you're always normal in that direction so that's called the normality rule and that's why bone mesis plasticity theory is also called the associated plasticity theory because you always follow this normality rule any deformation you are outside you go follow the normality rule you draw a normal from that point to on the on this yield criteria and wherever you intersect you basically are at that point and then based on that you can update the plastic strains tensors and then also the elastic and total strength tensors as well so this way it works if you look if you look at it from if you move from 2d to 3d stress space then this ellipse basically changes into a cylinder as you see here it becomes more complicated but again anything which is inside this cylinder is elastic and anything outside of this cylinder is plastic so then you have to update all this plastic strains as well and also you have to use a normality rule so if you go out then you always have to return normal to the yield surface and bring it back to the yield surface because your trial value is higher than that so again i will explain this when you when we will implement it that how this is implemented in the numerical code